Hey guys, what's going on? If you guys have watched my recent video, it was it was on a hunter's build. In today's video, I'm going over what my warlock built, Grandmaster Nightfall. All right. So, you do not have to imitate the exact thing. I am going to talk about what you could have and what you don't have to worry about, and some of the things in this build. All right. Let me get to it. On my Warlock, if I am in an endgame activity, I normally like to use Phoenix Protocol. And why is that? I like using Phoenix Protocol because Luna was changed. And yes, it does increase your weapon reload speed. Uh, and your Empire Rift increases range. But you don't really need it that much anymore, do you now, huh? We have like reload things that kind of do the same. I feel like... You're not going to be standing in a certain place for too long. Uh, the wrist don't even affect its Nagi reload, so that's not something that you're going to be using anyway. And for me, I like to use Phoenix Protocol because I feel like it's, it's, it's a synergy that happens with the whole entire team, especially if you have your well or your super. You kind of use that to kind of stay alive, right? Not only do you get to stay alive, but your teammates as well. And you have something to work with for a certain amount of time. That means that you can take a little bit more hits. And I am not sure if the enemies are going to be, when they're 25 over, if they're going to be able to, like, one hit you in a well. But I don't think so. Um, and when it comes down to a Phoenix Protocol build, I love to have a lot of intellect. Now, I didn't get lucky with, like, the Zach Phoenix Protocol that I wanted. This one only had the intellect of 17, so I had to put the intellect mod on it, and it went up to 27. But it worked out in my, on my end. Why? Because I still have 107 recovery and 100 intellect. Now, a lot of people will tell you that the diminishing return between intellect at 8 and intellect at 10 isn't too big, and I know that. But with Phoenix Protocol, I want everything to matter. Because anything that I kill while I have my well up also gives me my energy back. And the beautiful thing about this is that on my class item, I like to use Dynamo. I reduce super cooldown when I'm using my class ability. And I also like to use Perpetuation that reduces my class ability when I'm using my class ability right so reduce reduces the cooldown as i use my class ability that means i can get it back faster the faster i get it back the more i can use dynamo hence if i pop my well down and i am close to getting my uh you know my super again i'm probably gonna drop my rift and the cool thing about this subclass here uh the tomb of grace Here's a few cool things about it. Strike enemy with this melee to inflict burn damage and you empower yourself. Another thing that I would like to show here is that on my hunter build, I kind of spoke about how I wanted my hunter to have taken charge and high energy fire, which is a 20% damage buff. Well, the wall I kind of has that without needing it, right? I have an empowering rift. It does the same amount. And since they don't stack, there's no point in me doing that. Or like the well doesn't stack with high energy fire either. The high energy fire works with bubble. It works with like tractor, divinity, and other things. But it does not work with, you know, uh, empowering riff or a well. So I don't really need on this character. Now let's get back into it. Ben ben Benevolent Dawn. Healing or empowering allies regenerates your grenade, melee, and riff energy. So here's the thing. If you're going to be playing the subclass... For me, I look at myself as the healer, the medic on the team. But that means that I will be healing my teammates all the time. And guess what? If I grab if, if I grab my grenade and I see that a teammate is hurt and I, you know, I hit them with it and they walk through it, guess what? That's giving me my riff energy back. Riff energy goes back to me dropping the rift down, me getting almost again, me getting my super energy from dropping the rift down. So it causes a cycle of perfect synergy. You're going from not only being the person that can heal your teammates, keep people alive, to consistently having these things when you need it. All right? And here we are. Divine protection. 
Hold your grenade button. You convert your grenade to a blessing that heals allies, targets, and drops an overshield. And then you basically you and your allies can kind of run through it. Right? And it is it is so amazing because all you have to do, you can see it here. You hold it out, you throw it down, people walk through it, they have an overshield for a time being. And that is that is a great thing. And as they walk through it. It's also going to be giving you back your riff energy. And then if you have other things in place, like I did there, like I put here, you're going to be awesome. Now, if you do not have, you know, maybe high recovery, but you have other ways to heal your your teammates. What I mean by other ways, I mean fire team medic. All right. So with fire team medic, if you destroy one mind cell, it creates a burst of healing for you and your allies nearby. I try putting that together with, I, I mean, I really try putting that together with Benevolent Dawn. It seemed like it worked, but I have to, I have to retest it. it. It didn't seem like it gave me as much as I thought, right? But it's still a good thing to have. If you do not have, like, high recovery, but you somehow did get your intellect to 100, 5T Medic could be a thing that you can use here. If you are also using a Seraph weapon, or hear me out here with the same you need i mean you need a solo element but with the same subclass you can do something called wrath or rasputin where solar splash damage final blows have a chance to create war mind cells that means that if you're in your warlock your solar grenades can do that all right so you throw your grenade and if it kills the enemy it has a potential chance to drop a, a war mind cell and when it drops that warm mind cell, you shoot it, it's going to heal you and your nearby allies. I made an entire video on the mods for this season, but let me just say that Fire Team Medic is so good because when your life gets down to about 10% and someone shoots the warm mind cell that you have around and you have this perk proc, it's going to not only give them an overshield, but it's going to get your base health up to 70, which is a lot. That means that you went from almost dying to being right back in the fight and doing things or being a little bit more aggressive, especially when certain enemies need to uh, be taken out quicker than others. Usually you walk in the room, you see like who is the main target, who's going to bother you as much. And in most rooms, if there's a Colossus, especially with their uh, their arc weapons, the, the whips or the, the the solar machine guns that just never miss, those are your main guys. So having something like that does help out or clutch out in those time beings, right? Another cool perspective that I kind of wanted to put into here is let's say that you do have the 100-100 build and you have some kind of open space somewhere, right? Why not throw on a concussive dampener? Why concussive dampener? Concussive dampener is really good against overload champions. Captains? And minotaurs. Why? Because they like to splash and basically shoot around you. And what this does is reduce the incoming area of effect damage from combatants. So depending on the situation, sometimes what I'll do is I will sacrifice some of my recovery be because I know that my intellect is going to be fine anyway. I will sacrifice some of my recovery just because the class ability cooldown is at 41. But me having perpetuation here does kind of help out. So if I sacrifice that, I can now... Go into a piece of gear, and instead of having recovery, I can go with concussive dampener. Right? I mean, isn't that isn't that good? I think that's like a perfect thing to have, right? It's almost like having a synergy. Um, and also, the, the fallen armaments and the hive armaments and fallen barrier and uh, fallen armaments. Those things, because we saw we see the knife was that we're gonna get. Make sure that you kind of find a way to incorporate those into your loadout, right? Having forever heavy because you have armaments against fallen or hive. Barrier, that means that you get to take less damage, you know, for a certain amount of time. And it reduces their damage by 20%. All those things will help. But this is just like the base build for a warlock for me. I, will, I like to have, if possible, 100 recovery and 100 intellect. With Phoenix Protocol. All right. If you guys love this content, please make sure you comment below, share with friends. I love this game. I love YouTube.
I love to explain things. And if you have any questions, I am live every day on Twitch for about 10, 11 hours. Come on. You know, come say hello. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate it.